one greetings greetings to my youtube subscribers welcome to dorsey's resource the title of this video is going to be when will the silver slash gold price manipulation end i plan to go over um, some information some of it you guys already know about but for newbies out there uh, you may not know this is uh, going to be a good video so without further ado I'd like to give a disclaimer. This video is going to be for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. Please understand everyone's individual circumstance or situation may be different. It's up to every individual competent person to please do his or her own homework and research into the matter being discussed. The information being presented is not to be construed as legal advice. In the event you feel you need to seek a competent professional, it is encouraged you do so at one's own leisure. The opinions expressed in this following video do not necessarily reflect the views of other individuals or organizations affiliated or not affiliated with the content creator. Viewer discretion is advised. The point of views and purpose of this video is not to bully or harass anyone, but rather share that opinion with other like-minded individuals curious about the subject. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowances made for fair use for the purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. With that being said, all rights are reserved. Now I wanted to talk about, um, there's people out there that have channels that talk about silver uh, and precious metals. This is a topic I have covered in the past. I don't cover as much. And I wanted to go over, as you guys can see the date in this article from the screen capture that I'm presenting uh, right now, that JP Morgan says, this article is from September 23rd, 2020. JP Morgan is set to pay $1 billion and uh, record spoofing penalty. Some of you all, many of you all may not st still be aware. I know some of you all are aware of this uh, and have been for quite some time. This states JP Morgan Chase is poised to pay close to $1 billion to resolve market manipulation investigations by U.S. authorities into its trading of metals, futures, and treasury securities, according to three people with knowledge of the matter. The potential record for a settlement involving alleged spoofing could be announced as soon as this week. Mind you, this is an older article that I'm reading from, uh, in case you're just joining. Said the people who asked not to be named uh, because the details haven't been finalized, the accord would end probes by the Justice Department, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and the Securities and Exchange Commission into whether traders on J.P. Morgan's precious metal metals and treasuries deaths rigged markets two of the people said a penalty approaching one billion would far exceed previous spoofing related fines it would also be on par with sanctions in many prior manipulation cases including some brought several years ago against banks for allegedly rigging benchmark interest rates and in foreign exchange markets it says spoofing typically involves flooding derivatives markets with orders that traders don't intend to execute to trick others into moving prices in a desired direction. The practice has become a focus for prosecutors and regulators in recent years after lawmakers specifically prohibited it in 2010. While submitting and then canceling orders isn't illegal, it is unlawful as part of a strategy intended to dupe other traders. This next paragraph. It couldn't be determined whether New York-based J.P. Morgan will face additional Justice Department penalties in court. Previous spoofing cases have been resolved without banks or trading firms pleading guilty to criminal charges. However, when prosecutors filed cases last year against individual J.P. Morgan traders, they painted a grave picture of its precious metals desk, saying it operated as an illicit enterprise within the bank for almost a decade. Wow. Next paragraph it says the government's uh, set the government settlement with J.P. Morgan is not expected to result in any restrictions on its business practices. Said one person familiar with the negotiations between authorities and the bank. It is anticipated that J.P. Morgan 
will admit to wrongdoing. Spokespeople for the Justice Department, CFTC, SEC, and J.P. Morgan all declined to comment. In 2015, J.P. Morgan was among firms accused of manipulating currencies. It pleaded guilty to an antitrust charge and paid a $550 million fine to the Justice Department. The banks, the bank also paid penalties to U.S. regulators. The pending spoofing case against J.P. Morgan follows criminal charges filed last year against several of its employees, including former head of the Precious Metals Dex, uh, Michael Nowak. In that case, the Justice Department used racketeering laws more commonly used in mafia and drug and gang prosecutions, alleging the Precious Metals Desk effectively became a criminal enterprise for eight years. It says Nowak and three others accused in the case pleaded not guilty and are seeking to have charges dismissed. Two other former traders have pleaded guilty to conspiracy claims and are cooperating. Shortly after Nowak was charged, J.P. Morgan learned it was the focus of a separate but related criminal investigation into the bank's trading of treasury securities and futures according to another person familiar with the matter. J.P. Morgan, which disclosed that investigation earlier this year, said it's cooperating with authorities. Cracking down on spoofing has been a priority for prosecutors and the regulators since Congress outlawed it through the Dodd-Frank Act. Authorities are concerned that the practice has uh, proliferated in the era of electronic trading with market participants using computer algorithms to submit a high number of bogus orders. A court ruling last year paved the way for prosecutors to scrutinize trading going back a decade. Lastly, this is uh, the last of this particular article. More than two dozen individuals and firms have been sanctioned by the Justice Department or the CFTC, including day traders operating out of their bedrooms, sophisticated high-frequency trading shops, and big banks such as Bank of America Corp. and Deutsche Bank uh, AG. Bank of Nova Scotia last month agreed to pay $127.4 million to settle U.S. allegations that the company engaged in spoofing of gold and silver's contracts and made false statements to the government the bank admitted to wrongdoing. Like I said earlier, guys, to reiterate, this is a older article, the date at the top. Uh, this is from September 23rd, 2020. I was aware of this uh, back when, around the time this took place. I had actually had done a previous video um, a, a while ago about uh, Nova Scotia, uh, the man manipulation. And the reason I'm doing this video this ties in with those who study the redemption education that come to my channel. I, I appreciate you all sincerely that study the uh, sovereignty. I don't use that term. Uh, some have falsely tried to label people sovereign citizens or sov sits uh, out there. There is uh, there's some truth and relevance to that information. But the focus of this video is to give you all an idea and show, uh, do a screen capture video. Just you guys normally see me when I go live. Uh, and I'm showing my face, but I wanted to show you guys how I do do my research. I do my homework. I bookmark these articles, but I think there's other important uh, information to help you all connect the pieces. And I have some other uh, websites pulled up, by the way. And there's another related article. Uh, this is by Reuters. The, the article that I read from just now, this was from uh, Bloomberg, by the way, from September 23rd. So this is an older article. It's not a long, long time ago, uh, by the way. As you guys can obviously tell, this is with the previous administration. And this article pretty much talks about the same thing. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to scroll down. Uh, as you guys can see, this is why I'm doing a screen capture video. But there's, there's some other uh, information I have pulled up. And this has been talked about by other channels, as you guys can see right here. You can do this in your own due diligence. Here's the National Debt Clock, usdebtclock.org is the website. You see how, uh, as I point the mouse, it's at over $28 trillion. Now, a key thing, what I just got finished going over was uh, about the uh, price manipulation that uh, J.P. Morgan I just read about. Uh, now, here is a current uh, website 
there's another website you can go to to check the, the commodities market the price of precious metals I, tr I try to check this uh, website periodically I have to get in the habit again I'm going to click on this is coinflation.com now as you guys can see from this screen capture you see the price of silver is trading at uh, currently at twenty six dollars and ninety nine cents this is the uh, market price of spot spot price uh, gold is at uh, eighteen uh, one thousand eight hundred twenty dollars and thirty cents. Uh, spot price right now is showing an up arrow. Uh, silver came down a little bit recently. What I wanted, as I go back to the national debt clock, here's a key part. This was shown to me by uh, someone uh, who I would say is more knowledgeable than myself when I started. Um, getting into this uh, discipline, uh, learning about precious metals many years ago. This was shared with me more recently. As you guys can see over in the uh, middle right-hand corner of this article, I have put up the usdebtclock.org. You can see where it says the, the dollar to silver ratio in 1913 was $2.65 per ounce. That's what it would have cost you back then compared to the U.S. dollar where the dollar currently has weakened in its purchasing power uh, over time, by the way. And this is what the price is supposed to be at right now, $4,792 per ounce. As you can see, as I go back to coinflation, this is saying the current market spot price is at $26.99. Pretty much this was around $27 earlier. Now, if you go, let's say, if you were to buy a silver coin or go into a coin dealer, uh, you're going to pay what's called a, a premium. That's like a little, a few dollars uh, over the current uh, spot price, by the way. Without going into the details, there's a lot of videos. I've gone over this already. You guys can uh, go check out. There's other YouTube channels that specifically focus on uh, precious metal, silver, and gold. I it would behoove you to learn as much as you can about it. I encourage you all to go out there and at least uh, purchase uh, silver and go physical silver. Uh, by the way, you you want to stay away from the uh, the digital stuff. What I just got finished reading, but I want to show you that this is clear proof evidence how the market is being rigged. It's being manipulated from. These, this article I jumped back to that I just got finished reading earlier, then if you go to this national debt clock right here, and this shows just focusing on silver, the, the section for gold is just below it, where it tells you the dollar to gold ratio. Uh, this is where it's supposed to be at. Gold is trading, it should be at over $34,000. $101 and if we go back to coin inflation gold is at $1,820.30 at the current market price we're not talking about news McMatic. those are like the uh, gold coins you see in the encapsulation you know there's different grades for different variations based on the amount um, that you purchase whether you purchase coins grams bars etc uh, but it's broken up this is going by per ounce by the way where I'm reading from. So if we go back here to this national debt clock where this is going by per ounce, once again, uh, silver should be at $4,792. This is what it should be at right now. And I was informed even more recently by a, my private source, someone I consider to be very knowledgeable uh, that shared this with me. I didn't know about this aspect until like maybe a few years ago. Uh, by the way, I was shown a while back, but I had forgot about it. And this is really important information. If you have already been purchasing pressed metals, silver, and gold, this is important to know about, uh, by the way, because I have some other videos coming down the road for you guys. I appreciate you all uh, bearing with me. Uh, I know some of you guys have been wondering, uh, Dorsey, where you been? you gone dark for a while. And I've kind of discussed in the past the reason why I go dark or it did go dark from time to time. That means it's like a figure of speech, um, metaphorically speaking, why I haven't done a video in a while. Uh, by the way, there are some things coming down the pipeline uh, that are taking place. But getting back on subject, this website was shown to me uh, not too long ago and very recently 
a private source that I have went over again. They said that these m amounts that you see on this site, national, uh, this usdebtclock.org, that displays the national debt, which is over 28 trillion, stated to me in this middle right hand corner of here, if you read this chart, and tells you back in 1913, the, the price of silver was at $2.65 per ounce uh, against the, the U.S. dollar back then. That was the strength of it. Now, because of inflation, the dollar weakening over time, this is what it should be at. But because, you know, the bank uh, banks and uh, futures market, there's been a lot of manipulation going on. This is why you see these prices are much lower so the source actually told me they're doing you a favor uh, right now by it being this low in a way even though some argue there's uh, people have been upset that it's been manipulated for a long time really bad and when you get an understanding how the price is being slammed down when it's on its way up you know cryptocurrencies have done way better where they've allowed Bitcoin to do much better than gold by the way Bitcoin and Ethereum had been allowed to do perform very well in comparison to gold and silver o over time you know, for those who had I know had been buying silver and gold even before cryptocurrencies came out it's a great travesty but the source had told me and warned me that those out there who have not been acquiring or accumulating precious metals when this bubble pops and, and you see this debt clock shows the debt per citizens over 84,000 891 and there's like another section down here at the bottom where it has in the bottom right hand corner where it has liability per citizen I'm kind of hovering the mouse over at 443,922 now I don't know what the I can't say what the difference is between this one says liability per citizen and this one says debt per citizen so this is uh, I showed this to a friend of mine's wife a while ago who's who was an accountant and she had never heard of this uh, before. So we had gotten into an uh, argument about something. I told my friend he knows about it uh, perfectly well. And uh, I was making a point uh, at the time. And this really opened her eyes up because she had never even heard or never even saw this at the time before, by the way. So you see the comparison. I pretty much uh, proved my point. Others have gone over this other channels. By the way, I have touched on this in the past, but I wanted to do a screen capture video where you guys can see my screen, and I will try to do my level best to explain to you all uh, to bookmark this uh, website, these sites that I'm going over, periodically check them each day, and uh, learn, start learning as much as you can about uh, purchasing silver and and gold if you can afford it copper as well copper coins copper is still very very cheap by the way even though recently it hit uh, record highs uh, per pound by the way but they have uh, they sell uh, ounces uh, of copper on different precious metal sites and even I know because other channels I've watched out there a lot of people buy online however uh, it's best if you have a coin dealer LCS local coin store in the area to uh, start from there first and you can also check your listings for coin shows and things would actually help this is a jewel right here uh, the individual that shared this with me uh, this information stated to me many years ago that coin shows which I haven't been to in a while by the way I, I, I forget I would forget uh, based on my the type of schedule that I have but he stated you can find better deals than even the uh, local coin stores sometimes slightly better deals uh, especially if you get there earlier uh, there can be crowds of floods of people who are involved in this discipline there's still a lot of people out there who don't know about this discipline who are unaware for those out there who are preppers uh, you know would you know understand where, I, where I'm coming from so this other site I wanted to go over, have a map right here. Uh, this this chart, as you guys can see, says a chart of who owns the Federal Reserve. Now this website is called uh, SaveAPatriot.org. It has a hyphen in between Save the the letter A dash Patriot.org, and this uh, you may be able to do a um, 
a Google or Yahoo search, whatever search engine to your liking duck, duck, go. I pulled this up a while ago. I bookmarked it because there are some naysayers out there who try to tell you when I've gone over information. I've shown the book Bloodlines of the Illuminati in the past. I've shown, I've done book reviews. I talked about in some of my uh, live videos that I've done the book Children of the Matrix with David Icke. And you still have rumors out there that say, people that say that the uh, Illuminati is not real, the ruling class elite don't exist. Uh, how does this stuff apply? Are, are you a conspiracy theorist, Dorsey? Why are you trying to scare us? Well, when I do the screen capture video, you can see the actual proof, the evidence. I'm showing you from my screen. I have other articles uh, that I'm going to pull, I can pull up on uh, subjects that are related. Now, I wanted to tie everything in together and explain how this is related to redemption information. I really didn't want this video to be that long. Uh, wow, we're already 20 minutes in. However, uh, I'm going to read a little bit of this uh, and scroll down uh, really quick. But I'm going to read a portion of the top. Uh, as you guys can see, this is like a uh, flow chart that has the names of families connected to major corporations from banking to uh, airlines to life insurance to to the oil industry to uh, utilities etc and some of these corporations are still around uh, by the way that I still actually recognize uh, by the way I just scroll down real quick uh, like there's a few names in here like I recognize General Electric Exxon Corporation I know Exxon Mobil still around Hewlett Packard I can't say specifically they've gone through some things in recent years, uh, by the way. Uh, HP, that's a HP, by the way. Uh, I see life insurance companies in here. I see Northwest Airlines. They're still around. I think they're they're now Delta. Uh, by the way, I saw uh, Wachovia Corporation. That's now Wells Fargo, uh, by the way. Uh, I wanted to show that these corporations just didn't pop up. Out, out of nowhere they just didn't invent themselves you have to go back to they have a source of origin there's names there's lineages connected if I scroll at the top I remember some years ago I was with a friend of mine uh, I won't say the name who had went ended up going to the same college that I attended in Ohio very briefly uh, similar to myself and I remember we were hanging out some years later or, or during that time, I think he was still a student. I had actually already transferred, uh, uh, by the way. And we were in that city, which was in Ohio, and there was a store called the uh, Lazard or whatever. I had no idea that you look at the name in here, it says Lazard Brothers, and it shows a like a connection in this flow chart. So without further ado, before I wrap this video up, I'm going to read a little bit. It says... Uh, Federal Reserve Directors is a study of corporate and banking influence. I guess this was published sometime back in 1976, as you guys, this is what this says. It says, chart one reveals the linear connection between the Rothschilds and the Bank of England and the London banking houses, which ultimately control the Federal Reserve banks through their stock holdings of bank stock and their subsidiary firms in New York. The two principal Rothschild representatives in New York, J.P. Morgan Company, and Kuhn Lowell uh, and company were the forms, firms which set up the Jekyll Island Conference at which the Federal Reserve Act was drafted, who directed the subsequent successful campaign to have the plan enacted into law by Congress and who purchased the controlling amount of stock at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York in 1914. These firms had their principal officers appointed to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors and the Federal Advisory Council in 1914. In 1914, it states, a few families, blood or business related, owning controlling stock and existing banks, such as in New York City, caused those banks to purchase controlling shares in the Federal Reserve Regional Banks. Examination of the charts and text in the House Banking Committee staff report of August 1976 and the current stockholders list of the 12 regional Federal Reserve banks show this same family control. 
you guys can see. So I just wanted to go over that this information to kind of help you all connect the pieces. I did give a disclaimer earlier on. Uh, I'm going to go over it again. The opinions expressed in this following video do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of other individuals. I will say uh, the company or any entities involved uh, do not represent the political views or opinions expressed in this video. They are indemnified, I'm saying on a side note. Uh, so please keep in mind as I, when I give my usual disclaimer, it is up to everyone to do their own homework and research into this matter being discussed. Everyone's individual circumstance or situation may be different. It's up to every individual person to please do their own competent homework or research. In the event, if you feel you need to seek a competent professional, it's encouraged you do so at one's own leisure. Dorsey's Resource Channel is not liable or responsible for anyone's misuse of the information. Everyone is responsible for their own affairs. Uh, this uh, is permitted under copyright uh, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for the purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor so I want to thank you all for joining me uh, please if you have not done so uh, subscribe to Dorsey's resource you can follow me on Twitter at Dorsey's resource I'm on Facebook at Dorsey's resource uh, I'm also on uh, mind.com there's other platforms uh, you might see me down the road just in case anything happens. I've given you guys a warning. I may have other content down the road. But I appreciate you all taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch this video. Until next time, everyone, uh, take care. Peace.